there's a lot of people who have a deficiency of stomach acid that creates all sorts of issues. There's a really um, simple test that you can do to figure out if you potentially don't have enough acid in your stomach. I'm going to show you that. In fact, I'm going to show you three different tests. Okay. The test is called Riddler Gastric Acid Reflex Point Test. And so since your stomach is kind of right up underneath the, the lower part of the sternum and kind of going a little bit down below that, what you can do is you take your breastbone, okay, the bottom of your breastbone where it ends, okay, there's a little piece of cartilage there, and you go one inch below that, okay, and then you go one inch to the left, and you'll hit your rib cage right at that point. That is the location where you press into the rib cage and just see if it's tender. If it is overly sensitive, it could mean that you have a deficiency of hydrochloric acid. There's two other tests. Uh, one is a baking soda test. You get some regular baking soda in the morning on an empty stomach, and you take a fourth of a teaspoon in a glass of water, like eight ounces, dissolve it, drink it down, okay? Now, what's going to happen if you don't have enough of this hydrochloric acid in your stomach is you'll start burping, okay? So if you start burping within one to five minutes, then chances are you don't have enough acid because baking soda is alkaline and it's gonna start neutralizing the acids. But if you have enough acid, you won't have this burping. And then the third test you can do is just to take some betaine hydrochloride, which is the kind of the antidote or remedy for low stomach acid. And then with a meal, uh, take one before, right before you eat something, chew the food, go take another one, and then what you do is you'd keep adding um, a little bit more of this uh, betaine hydrochloride uh, with each meal, okay? So what's going to happen is if you have enough stomach acid, okay, and you drink this, it's going to cause you to burp within one to five minutes, okay? So if you're burping, that means you have enough stomach acid, okay? If you don't burp, that means you probably don't have enough acid. So those are the three tests that you can do to kind of figure out if you have low stomach acid beyond the symptoms of low stomach acid, which I want to get into. And the symptoms would be like indigestion would be number one, gas, bloating, acid reflux, GERD, anything that kind of reflux into your esophagus uh, would usually mean uh, low stomach acid. But Relating to this topic, I want to talk about another thing that's extremely common um, as we get older. It's called atrophic gastritis. And this condition is like in 50% of the population over the age of 55 or a version of it, okay? Because sometimes it could be asymptomatic and you might not even know you have it. But because it's so common, you should be aware of it. So here are the symptoms you start getting atrophy of the lining of your stomach. So your stomach actually starts to shrink. Now, the cells in the stomach also start to shrink, and those cells make hydrochloric acid. So guess what you're going to get? You're going to get lowered amount of hydrochloric acid. So this is one of the big reasons why we start losing our stomach acid as we get older, just because the cells start to shrink. Okay, and a certain percent, I'd say 10% of people who have atrophic gastritis have it because of an autoimmune disease. Okay, so that's another aspect to this. So there's chronic inflammation involved with this. And so we have low hydrochloric acid, but you have to also realize that the same cells that make hydrochloric acid also make something else called the intrinsic factor. And what's that? That's this uh, protein that gets released by those cells, travels down to the small intestine, and connects up with your B12 to allow for absorption. And if you don't have enough intrinsic factor, you're going to be deficient in B12, which you're going to notice fatigue, anemia, neurological problems, lowered cognitive function, and there's a lot of other symptoms that can occur from a B12 deficiency. You're also going to be low on folate. Now, as I've been doing deep dives into DNA, boy, across the board, so many people cannot absorb B12 and folate. Okay, so those are just two nutrients that a lot of people need more of. 
also without the stomach acid, um, the person's not going to be able to absorb iron too well. So they're going to be anemic from an iron angle. So we have anemia from B12 and anemia from iron. So you're going to be kind of lethargic, kind of tired, dragging, uh, loss of energy. You also will lose the taste for red meat, uh, the tolerance of eating meat. Maybe you can have a little bit, but too much just does not digest. That's a classic indication that you need more hydrochloric acid. If you're not digesting protein, okay, especially red meat, that can show up in a loss of muscle, a loss of amino acids, which can lead to a lot of other issues. And so this is what we see when people get older is a loss of muscle. And so this lack of hydrochloric acid uh, is a huge connection to that because of what's happening to the stomach. And like I said before, other symptoms would be indigestion, gas, bloating. And I also mentioned cognitive decline. Also brittle nails, okay, or weak nails. And that's probably due because a lack of collagen as well as iron. You might also experience restless legs. In women, you'll see thinning hair. You might experience acid reflux or, and this might be a new one for you, alkaline reflux. Wait, wait a second, what is alkaline reflux? Well, a good portion of the time when they evaluated this reflux material, they found that it's not just pure hydrochloric acid. It's many times mixed with bile salts being regurgitated from lower in the small intestine up into the stomach. Bile salts are alkaline, okay? So you're gonna get this alkaline reflux, but bile salts are very irritating to your esophagus. They act as like a detergent. They can kind of start dissolving things. So we have this combination of like acid that's dissolving the esophagus that can come up through the throat. And then we have the enzyme pepsin, which is a very powerful um, protein enzyme to start breaking down the protein of your esophagus. And then we have this detergent that can, you know, bile that can irritate the esophagus as well. You could imagine you can have all sorts of um, corrosive or almost like the, the esophagus and even the larynx could be starting to be highly irritated, creating a kind of a chronic cough and um, soreness in the throat. Etc. So it could be a major problem. Now, another common symptom would be muscle cramps or muscle twitching. Why? Because it's not just iron that doesn't get absorbed with an alkaline stomach. You have the other minerals like potassium, magnesium. Rosacea is another symptom, like the red cheeks of low hydrochloric acid. And you see that a lot in um, uh, probably women more than men, but men can have it as well. Um, that would be a perfect reason to take uh, some something to support that stomach acid, or shall I say a clue that you need stomach acid. Another uh, common symptom would be chronic halitosis, bad breath, okay, because if you're not digesting, you're getting a lot of undigested material, and that can create fermentation in the wrong place, and that can lead to um, a problem with your breath. What is the actual cause of this atrophic gastritis? One primary cause is this H. pylori microbe, right? And I have done videos on this. And so that's one cause. But here's the thing. That microbe stays in remission if you have enough acid in the stomach. So anything that lowers the hydrochloric acid in your stomach can kind of bring on this H. pylori, like junk foods or even taking antacids or an antibiotic. And so if it is an H. pylori problem, um, there's a really good natural remedy. It's called sulforaphane. It's in broccoli sprouts or broccoli microgreens. It's also in cabbage, cabbage juice. So the sulforaphane apparently can put this microbe back in remission. And so if you have just low hydrochloric acid, then betaine hydrochloride is an answer to start taking to help fix these, this problem. But many times, the lining of the stomach is inflamed. So if you take betaine hydrochloride, it can irritate it. So what you're gonna have to do is fix the inflammatory condition before you start to acidify the stomach, and that could take some months. So how do you do that? One way is to start consuming uh, certain things like cabbage juice or wheatgrass juice powder with some water can actually help soothe and help heal the stomach lining because of the chlorophyll content but you're just gonna to have to start eating healthy with zinc. Zinc is going to help heal that as well. 
And so you want to do that over a period of time until the inflammation goes down. A good probiotic would be important too. And the way that you know that you have inflammation in the stomach or even an ulcer is when you take this betaine hydrochloride or even apple cider vinegar, things get worse. Okay, You get this burning sensation. So that's just uh, one point about that. But I will say uh, taking uh, B12 and folate would be important if you have this problem because your body is probably not uh, generating this intrinsic factor. So you're probably deficient. And so you need to take something in the right form. And I'm talking about the, the right form of B12 and, and folate. And the right form would be methylcobalamin and methylfolate, both of those together. And uh, you probably have more energy if you do that. But I wanted to just bring up these different tests that you can do to determine this low stomach acid. It's a really common problem. And for more information on what's really causing this low HCL and some additional solutions, I put up this video right here. Check it out.